Hey guys, welcome back to KSP. We are floating over Minmus because we've seen this configuration ship launched many times before. Uh, now you'll notice my green dot in the background there, not the not the sort of the tealy one, but the actual lime green. Uh, that's the Biome Bouncer, which if you remember from last time, is a ship stranded 8 kilometers away from any sort of help. Uh, and that is why we have launched this vessel, not just to go and get all the science from the Biome Bouncer, though that is also an important um, component to this mission. Uh, but it is also to go deliver um, monoprop, because that's what the Biome Bouncer runs off of. Uh, now you'll notice on my left hand side we have a bit of debris. Uh, it's the schizophrenic uh, deities debris. Um, so yeah, at some point, because of this, we need to go around and try and deorbit all the, the the various landing stages that I've brought. Well, I think this is actually a launch stage that I brought up and dumped in orbit around Minmus. Uh, that is not the only one. Um, this vessel, as much as it pains me to say, has dumped a, la a launch stage in high Minmus orbit. Um, which, obviously, we're going to have to go get at some point. Perhaps with the help of the Kerbal Attachment System, we could drain it of all its resources and maybe deorbit it, or possibly use it to uh, create another sort of mega ship out in orbit somewhere where we strap everything together that, we ha that we've that we just managed to dump out there. Um, yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> right, so we are uh, throwing our trajectory right now, and we're trying to get the, uh, the tail end of that blue arc getting down as close as possible to that green thing right there. Now, I have done many 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 landings on Minmus now uh, and none of them have been easy. Uh, that's a lie. The, the first two were easy and then from that point on I started to try and put down in uh, specific specific places and that's not great. That's not really what I well it is what I want and it's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and it turns out that unfortunately I don't really have the skills to be doing that perfect every time. Though I am practicing and that is the uh, major point on being able to get better at anything. So I have judged myself to be roughly over the top of the biome bouncer at the moment so I am nullifying my forward velocity. Again, if you need to know where my forward velocity is kept, if you look on the top right third line down you will see there's vert and horizontal or vert and ho. Uh, they tell me how fast I'm going, which is, which is nice. It's better than the, the little display we get on the, the nav ball, um, which is obviously a combination of your vertical and horizontal, which doesn't tell you if you're traveling over the surface or even relative to the target, which you know, it, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, it could, could be better. So we are coming down fairly rapidly, about 34 meters per second which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've only got a thousand meters and you're doing 34 every single second, well, that's, that's very quick. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, it's only 30 seconds, something like that. The other slightly annoying thing that I've noticed is I'm a lot further away than I thought I was. I thought I was right over the top of it and it turns out that no, I'm not. So what I'm trying to do now is uh, swing my, my engine nozzles around so I can get a, a, an idea of which way I need to point relative to the ship. Um, as we all know, the nav ball is not ideal for trying to sort out that sort of stuff. But you, yeah, you, you just need to kind of see what's happening on screen whilst only really steering by your nav ball so that you can get the two together um, and make some sort of weird thing in your head. Um, but that didn't go too well, so what I'm going to try and do now is by using chase cam, um, if I look directly down at my cockpit, I can I can figure out which way I want to really be travelling, and that, that gives me a real sense of real sense of position on the nav ball and in space, which is is good. Definitely what we're after, or at least it's kind of a component to be able to get what we're after, which is a gentle touchdown right next to our stranded vessel over here, so we can transfer some fuel across and save everyone. Yay! And if anyone can do it, Jeb can. I mean, look at the smile on his face right there. He was born for this. Um, so we're about 700 meters away from our target at the moment, which probably means we're about 200 meters off the floor. I'm not sure how far away we are from the biome bouncer, but I'm going to estimate it to be around 400 meters. Um, now, uh, we are definitely too far away, so we, do we need to start moving our velocity vectors towards where the biome bouncer is. Uh, and we're going to spend a lot of time pogoing up and down, getting, getting close to this, because... 
Well, in essence, it's because it's very difficult to make the, fir the right move first time assertively and correctly. Um, I, I, I'm still not like intuitively knowing where my ship's going to go every time because, hey, every ship I build is different and they all have different mass configurations and number of engines to push them and different amount of thrust on the, the, the little bit of throttle and it's just all different every time. So how can I possibly know? I think you guys are uh, expecting far too much of me. Um, but anyway, we're very close to the floor now, so we're going to try and make ourselves... Um, well, stable for starters, and then we're going to try and bounce our way over that way. Maybe I should have called this this ship the bouncer. It does seem to be doing a lot of bouncing, but what we're going to try and do is bounce close to that vessel over there. Yeah, I didn't repeat myself at all there. So at this point, I'm starting to feel quite confident. I can I can see my ship. We're less than like 50 meters away from it, <laughs> and everything seems to be working out generally all right. Now. This should have been a cautionary note for me. As soon as I start feeling like I'm doing all right, something's going to go wrong somewhere. So we're going to ease it down. We're, we're close enough, I reckon. And for some reason, even with SAS and then in a the second RCS, I just cannot stop this thing turning over. So against all my will and judgment, we've ended up with this on the floor. Now, not a terrible thing. But it does leave me with a situation where my my pipe's on the wrong side. Um, now I'm not sure. Well, first thing we're going to do is get Jeb Dyer out to see if he can push the ship up, because obviously the RCS didn't work. So why would not a small jetpack applied in the right area work? Um, I'll tell you why. Because physics. That's why. Um, and, and all we've managed to do is knock Jeb unconscious. Well done, Jeb. Well done. Okay, so that plan obviously was not working. What we're going to have to try and do is uh, maybe rock this vessel around. Uh, all we need to do is get that pipe there pointed at the other ship. It's, it's like it's not rocket science. It should be well, it is kind of rocket science, but it should be relatively easy, right? We, we've got RCS. We've got we've got um, SAS. Uh, we've got RCS to spare. Um, even though we were supposed to be bringing it over there. Now I've decided now that my my engines were giving me trouble. Um, which they were, they were they're just far too, too balanced and stuff. Um, unfortunately, when I let them go, they kind of hung around and gave me a little like snuggle hug, and now I'm, I'm kind of stuck between my engines. So I've got, got, got to rock it around. Rock it around? <laughs> Pun. Um, by, by rock, I mean rock as in what you do with a, a, a crying baby. You, you shake them, right? Anyway, bad parenting tips aside, one of my major problems right now is that my uh, solar panel is in the shade. Now, this vessel only has one solar panel on it, and that's a might inconvenient when you're trying to use your reaction wheels. Indeed, this is frustrating enough for me to go, you know what, I'm going to load up the quick save I did when I first landed. But I forgot that the first thing that I did when, when landing was fall over, so that didn't really help me all that much, apart from it's put these uh, massive engine tanks still back on my vessel, which... I don't really think help. Though one thing that did definitely help was moving that solar panel to the underside of my vessel so that I had a reaction wheel to be able to do this break dancing. Woo! Now I very nearly got it there. Um, and indeed very nearly got it there. But once again, I fell over. Um, which just shows the futility of what I'm trying to do here. So we're going to uh, take full control of reaction wheels here and try and get up on one engine. Because one point gives us less friction so that we can spin up back onto where we were going. Unfortunately, my landing legs get in the way, which don't make it very easy. Especially as now my entire cockpit is pointed away from the sun. So the amount of solar panel that power that I am getting through that panel is, well, I'm going to call it negligible. Uh, anytime I try to use it whatsoever, the power just gets drained. Now, I took Jebedi Jebediah out because I was going to see how far away um, the, 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 the fuel line would stretch. But I thought, no, no, I, I know it doesn't stretch that far. Let, let's get back inside. And, I don't know, maybe try some engines? All right, that, that didn't work so well. Let, let's try and point further up and try some engines. Oh, oh, oh. But it does put me up in the air like this. So surely I can take control of this. First thing I'm going to do, shed everything that's not important. Of course. Uh, and then we're going to try and point ourselves upwards. Now, for some reason, my RCS, not my RCS, my uh, SAS control isn't working as well as I would like at this point. In fact, so not well that we just managed to uh, break some landing legs. Uh, but this does mean that we're now using a smaller vessel 
with the same control, uh, same control wheels, so we should be able to spin her up like that. Now, with using, with leaving SAS on, we're going to get Jebediah out and we're going to go fix that landing leg because, well, if we can get just a little bit more stable, we won't be ro uh, relying solely on solar charge to keep us standing, and then everything should be all right at that point, right? Hopefully, everything's all right. So we're going to grab a uh, a line and we're going to fly out there and we're going to go, ah, oh, you, you fool, Jeb, you knew this wasn't far enough. Get back in your vessel and fly even closer because, you know, nothing goes wrong when you do that, surely. Um, <laughs> right, so jetpack jet skills away. We, we fly over here and we're going to use RCS because it's, it's a little bit less destructive. Though I am uh, much intrigued about how that... Um, landing leg right there is spinning really quite nicely uh, so we're within 20 meters and I'm like mm, 20 meters should be should be cool right it, it should be close enough uh, we're gonna let Jeb free fall out of his cockpit again because that's for some reason he needs to triple fall his way out there um, you know it's all about a sense of style when you're doing this sort of stuff and uh, then a small jump and a bit of uh, jetpack puts us into into the air around there well there's not any air there is there it puts us into space yeah well the 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 science says we're in space here so it must be space right and all that waffling has led us to this point mission complete we are saving it yay <laughs> Um, right, so the only thing really left to do after transferring all the fuel, of course, is to move all the science across. Oh, it's nice how the pan goes across with the uh, with the monoprop there. That must be where all the weight is, right? No. Um, so yeah, we need to get Jeb. Oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch this roll. I I think it's a beautiful metaphor for life. Really, you you spend all your time putting things together and making sure everything's perfect, but when everything like. When everything is said and done, you're just a landing gear rolling down some hill somewhere, right? Now, there was an awful lot of us watching that, so I thought we'd uh, we'd come away... Uh, well, I'd cut that out. Um, there was like three, four minutes of it. I don't know why I watched that for so long. Uh, I was obviously very much taken by it. So what we're going to do now is transfer all the science across. So Jeb just needs to get his, uh, get his pockets on, I suppose, and grab everything. Uh, so we're going to start with the the goo, and then we're going to get all the material science, and hopefully I'm going to remember to get uh, the uh, temperature sensor. And I've just that that pause was there because I just remembered that um, uh, Kirk had gone out and got a whole load of EVA and and surface samples and all sorts of external science, and I don't think I told Jeb to go pick it up which means there's still a load of science on the moon of slow uh, on Minma sorry uh, a load of really valuable science actually uh, and for some reason I can't put these in the in the, the, the command pod there we go that's all done and yeah I really not not watched Jeb pick up that science so what we're gonna do here is something a bit fun you'll notice I've just quick saved and I want to know what happens to this fuel line well it turns out it's rigid I mean look at that uh, <laughs> I thought this would be... Well, I wanted to know what would happen, and it turns out something amazingly cool happens. Uh, a little bit of um, upwards momentum was imparted as we first took off, and we were pushing against the floor with the other vessel. Um, and then you start spinning up so fast, and for some reason, my, my, my little uh, uh, bio-bouncer broke, so we couldn't even carry on with that. So we're going to go back to this save point here, but it's good to know what happens if you fire up all your engines whilst everything's still attached. You spin out in like crazy mad spinny stuff things. So with that knowledge in my head, what we're going to do is we're going to take Kirk out and we're going to unplug the vessels from each other. There we go. Uh, we're going to set Kirk back in and hopefully we're going to take Kirk home right now. Obviously, as this is a space program, we have more than a couple of system checks to perform before we get rolling. But I'm going to have a quick look around my ship, make sure all my landing legs are, uh, are fine. Uh, we're then going to transfer the Jebediah and take him home because you know what? I didn't think Kirk wanted to go home right now. He was enjoying himself out on the plains. Um, so... Headed eastwards, looks like eastwards, yeah, headed eastwards, we're going to go round the planet and hopefully head our way home as soon as possible. Now it turns out that I always manage to do this takeoff burn whilst we're on the other side of the planet from Kerb, and so we're going to have to, as normal, time warp our way all the way around the planet, and hopefully, well, what, by planet, moon, well, I'm going to call it a planet, because anything that's kind of free-floating in space is a planet to my mind, um, that doesn't include Pluto, Pluto is an asteroid, get over it. And if you want me to argue about it in the comments, just, yeah, just start, go on. I'll talk to you all about Cirrus and Eris and stuff like that, and I'll be like, nah, if they're not planets, why, why is Pluto a planet? But anyway, 
beautiful view of Kerbin in out of our windshield there. That's a, is it a windshield? I suppose it technically it is, but even though there's no wind, um, like a, a viewport. Hmm. That's the thing about playing Kerbal Space Program is it's definitely challenging my ideas of what I call stuff. Yeah, you know, when you slow down, you, you might be braking, but actually you're just thrusting, and it might be a windshield, but there's no wind. So what are we doing? Ah, oh, confusion. Anyway, so we're now around where we want to be in our orbit, and we're just going to thrust. Thrust hard with that tiny, tiny little engine, and try and bring our periapsis down to, well, below the atmosphere of Kerbin, for preference. Um, because, you know, if we don't have to waste fuel stopping, that's great. Um, no, no one really wants to waste fuel stopping, do they? Uh, and now I'm going to perform a few trim maneuvers for some strange reason. Uh, well, yeah, my trajectory's set, but you know, let's let's just muck about with it a bit more, right? <laughs> this beautiful camera view right here gives us a real sense of uh, how small my ship is compared to Minmus. Oh, bye Minmus! Wow, that was quick. Uh, and now we're going to try and keep an eye out for Kerbin. Now, as always, I'm in deep space, so I have no idea where anything is. So we get, we're going to just kind of like swing the map round and and try and spot the the, the thing we're trying to spot, which is all the way down there. Uh, so map view is by far the best way to uh, to uh, cross the distance because you don't have to try and look for the little marble off in the distance somewhere. You're just like, hmm, yeah, let's go do that. Right. So 12 minutes to launch uh, to landing. According to this, we've got no electric charge and we've got no. Uh, well, no monoprop, but if we just like ramp up this engine a little bit, we should be able to turn ourselves round to uh, to face the, the the solar panel into the, the sun. Hopefully, or alternatively, I could just be like, "Ha! Ah, who needs solar panel?" and crash ourselves. Uh, when I say crash, smash ourselves <laughs> into the atmosphere and let that do all the braking for us. So we're under aerodynamic effect at the moment. You can tell by the way my nose turned round without me touching any of the controls. A uh, little bit of heat shock. But that's all right. We're we're in like a perfectly aerodynamically designed bullet-shaped vessel. I mean, what could go wrong? Nothing's going to break off. We're going to pop our landing gear out, and hopefully, very soon. No, no, not very soon. What we're actually going to do is wait for as long as possible before we pop our parachutes out because plummeting to the ground, right? Oh no! All right, we're going to do it like two and a half kilometers up. And for the sake of brevity, because this is already starting to run quite long, we're going to drop down here. Woo! Done! Yay! Right, we have another vessel to deal with, right? Uh, hopefully I'm just going to... What What am I doing here? Hopefully right now I'm just going to uh, recover my vessel. Or indeed I could just drop Jeb on the floor for no reason. Um, and when my vessel starts to turn over, I even try and get Jeb underneath. Uh, we're going to take a small EVA report and a surface sample. I didn't want to put that flag there. Um, yeah, we're just going to cancel that. Uh, and we'll do the surface sample as I was intending to do. That's why we got out. And then we're going to get Jeb back in and recover the vessel. So, back on Minmus, we've waited for sunrise because, you know, obviously the amount of time it took us to get down to Kerbin meant that Minmus went round and got, himself, got itself back in shadow. Or at least all my landing sites back in shadow, which, uh, you know, that's part of the thing. Now, we've got like 80 odd bits of. 80 odd units of monoprop, uh, which means that we're in for a very boring flight. I'm just going to take it nice and easy, and indeed, we're going to jump this particular bit of footage all the way over to the mining vessel where everything's all good. Yay! Right, well, all that's really left for me to say is thank you very much for joining me for this double adventure. I will see you next time when we're going to move the science vessel around to get it like over there, um, and well, hopefully, start working on some sort of uh interplanetary vessel because obviously you know that's why i've put this all this out here is so we can go further out but yeah thank you very much for joining for this adventure i will see you next time bye bye